Good morning. Today's short video is going to be about Uncle Dorkel, which I mentioned before. I am going to scrap him and save the head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take him out on the bench and I'll show you the insides. I'm using the Bavlov W1, which will give me a good wide view of everything in very clear video. I want to show you what is involved in me stripping it down. And I am going to strip it down. I've had one viewer says he'll come and pick it up. It's all talk, you know. And I deleted the comment because uh, I tried responding, replying back to him, and never got he never got back. So I'm not playing games. I I am going to strip him down, but it's not going to be today. What I want to do is to haul him out on the bench out there, get him in the sunlight. And I want to show you the back and what is involved in taking them down. The head is 17 inches from here to this point right here. So that re involves a big box. And judging from the cost of that Crosley 817 radio that did go out to Buzz, and I finally got it mailed out today, Buzz gave me a shipping label, they would not pick it up at the house unless they charge me $28 to pick it up. That's insane. So I brought it out to a package service that is in East Lyme, Connecticut. And I just got back from there. So thank goodness the package finally is going to go to Buzz. Uh, Buzz and I are going to be very happy. Can you imagine me paying $28 <laughs> I've been making two dollars in the radio. <laughs> oh man, boy, I'll tell you. So you can see, there's no way in hell that Uncle Dorkel is going to be shipped. I'm having my doubts about shipping the head, um, because even the head is going to be a box about 17 to 20 inches long in order, unless like. It's 17 inches from the tip of his head to right here at the base of the neck. So the head stick would have to be cut off. The head stick goes all the way down to the bottom, you'll see. So I want to show you the inside, because I want to show you what is... For those of you who have never seen the inside wiring, a lot of you have, of what was involved in building this guy. And I know that... I'm not, I said I'm not going to be making many videos, but... You got to remember if the videos are important I will be making them. I am not going to stop making flaps. I'm just cutting way back on the flaps. I don't consider this a flap. This is just a situation where I need to show you what is involved and when I get some warm weather It's a nice sunny day today. But it's a little cold. But not that cold that I can't show you the inside of Uncle Dorkel. When we get a nice warm day, it's going to take me quite a while to strip them down, get the wire cutters out, and cut all the wiring out, and do a lot of cutting. To remove things. There's layers and layers and layers of masking tape to build his body, to make the curvature. Wiring is buried in there. There's a lot of work that went in here. Nobody is going to pick this up. So I don't, I'm not even going to acknowledge anybody picking this up. The offer is still open. If Dan of Cool Blue Lights wants it, he wants to come and get it. Let me know before we get some real good weather because when I start stripping, I'm not stopping. That didn't sound right. I'm not stripping. I'm stripping Uncle Dorkel. <laughs> All right. So enough talk. I want to show you what is involved. Because I have to do this now. Because uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to have my surgery for the hernia May 12th. 
So either Uncle Dorkle has to be stripped before then or well after that, which could be in the summertime, because I don't want a chance lifting him. I'm guessing he's 40 pounds. The head probably weighs 10 or 15 pounds by itself. I don't know. I don't have a scale. I have no way of knowing. All I know is we get sticker shocks. Because everything I ship out is from the post office because it's much, much easier for me to ship from the post office. Dealing with UPS, I have to go 15, 20 miles out of my way. I'm lucky to be able to find that place to deliver that package. So for me to ship the head out, which I said I will do at my expense, but it's going to be several months before I'd even think of that. So that's the story there. I want to show you what is involved. i got to stop talking here so I can do that. I'll get him on the bench. I'll open up the back and show you what is involved in that. Be right back. There he is on the bench, all in his glory. Now, I have the remote control. I have the wireless remote and the wired one for the mouth trigger and everything, which I believe is about a 20-foot cord, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, all that stuff is just going to go into my electronic supplies, parts, and things like that. When I get through pulling the parts out of, out of him, after I remove the head, there's going to be enough to fill a good-sized box, probably one foot square, at least. One cubic foot, at least. All right. So, let me get the back open. I'll be right with you. First of all, we got an audio amplifier in here. We got a, a five inch subwoofer that came out of a realistic subwoofer that I bought many years ago and the amplifier went bad on it. We got a mid-range speaker up here so when he's remote we can use a wireless FM mic which I never bought to connect to this amplifier to speak remotely. This is a deodorant to keep him from stinking. Everything in that shed that's put there is musty even though the shed don't leak. Right here is a car window motor, which I got from uh, Joe and Mary Ann out in Pennsylvania. They sent me the window motor here and a car window motor up here, which operates his right arm, which is remote controlled. His left arm is manually operated because I don't have another, enough room to put it in. So his, his left arm will go up, but it's very, very hard. But it does move. But this one moves with the remote control, which I have in the shed, which plugs into here. There is wiring in layers here. You can see how I did all the wiring here with terminal strips. A lot of investment went in here. Uh, a motor speed control for the head that I got on eBay. Um... So it makes the head turn slower or faster, depends on where you put the rear stat uh, potentiometer, which is in here somewhere, I don't remember. Uh, a number of fuses. There's a quarter inch plywood right here where my finger's pointing. And behind that is all masking tape that forms the body. Other wiring is underneath. You can see that here. Here's the relays. And I made a shoulder relay reversing circuit that I built that controls the head. Here's the head stick. Now, this is the solenoid right here, the car window motor solenoid, which I got off of... Uh, a website, I don't remember, did science stuff or something like that. I ordered it. It's a car window lock 
solenoid that operates his head and this is the cord that used to operate on my finger when I used to have a manually operated and when you pull that which is very very hard it moves his lip his um, lower jaw so what I would probably do and you can see how long this thing is so the base of this comes down to here which is about this so if you take a ruler and go from here to the top of his head I don't even want to think about it but that's going to be as big of a box as the radio I shipped to bars so the best thing I would probably do is to just chop this off and I have to save up the money to ship the head to somebody which I'd be willing to do but not at this time I can't afford it over here you got more fuses and terminal blocks you got wiring coming in here and more fuses over here and you got terminal blocks here and here it takes a, uh, a gel cell which I have in the shed that sits here you've got your positive and negative wires right here I could be talking too loud because I'm outside uh, don't mean to the gel cell will run the 12 volt motor just fine it's cold out here so this is the main on and off switch that turns everything off the only thing that I did not do and can be done is to add a safety diode in here because if you put this on reverse polarity you will blow out your motor speed control circuit you will blow out the Gordo's board uh, which I think is here now this is the wireless this is the wireless receiver well you'll blow that out too there's, few, there's a 7 amp fuse for the arm in here somewhere there's a fuse for the head another fuse for the amplifier motor speed here's the motor speed potentiometer right here I just spotted it it's been a while since I worked on this there's a lot in here in order for me to take and cut the head this body is in layers there is quarter inch plywood screwed on and also as a support for the carrying handles there was a lot of work that went into him and this is why I was very very reluctant to strip him but the only way that I could give this to somebody and believe me there's a lot of money that went in here a lot of money a lot of time you have no idea I literally designed this myself with I did have a lot of help on the electronics from Jim Asbell a lot of help and they got the two window motors from Joe and Marianne and a lot of other help and stuff on this here so the best thing I would like to see this is someone to pick it up but I'm not playing games with somebody if you're serious post it but you must leave some way of me getting a hold of you I am sorry I'm as I said before I will not post my email address on YouTube or any other place so that's just the way I feel about it now this here is a a bracket that keeps the battery from sliding out so when you're carrying them you can carry them with the battery I just carried him out now I don't think he weighs 40 pounds he might weigh about 25 or 30 so not that heavy 
And the base is very thick, but there's a lot of wiring inside here. So, there's a lot of terminals, a lot of wiring and stuff, a lot of stuff that I would literally have to rip out. A lot of which I can save, like the relays, the sockets for the relays, the remote receiver. There's a Gordo's board in here somewhere. I think it might be up here. Yeah, I think it's up here on the other side of the... This is the assembly I made for the... Uh, you can see the cable wound around that connects to the motor, a window motor that operates this arm here. Okay, and the reason I'm making this video is not to rattle on, but I want to show you what is involved for those of you who have never seen me build this. There's videos on me doing just about everything on this. There's a lot of changes that occurred uh, from the earlier head controls and everything. There's one thing that I was not able to do is to have a safety set up so if the head turns too far it should shut off. Uh, that's the only thing I was not able to do. On the original design, uh, there was an automatic shutoff circuit that uh, John in the UK, solder, the solder shack, he's no longer around. I haven't heard from him in many, 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 many years. Uh, he had a circuit, but then the, something went wrong in that circuitry, and I had to get rid of it. So I designed my own using reversing relays and when you operate the control which I'm going to if I can find it uh, I'll show you so the head can only be turned about this far in the same way with that side and any more and you'll start ripping wires out like the eye wires and the mouth cabling and so forth. This is the remote control. This here is just glued on to this box. This is the wireless system that controls the head left and right and this arm up and down. This controls the eyes by holding it in. The eye motor in the head is 6 volts. It operates on 6 volts, not 12. This controls the mouth when you push that. This plugs into the back over here. So, ideally I'd like to give this to somebody but you will have to pick it up. So if there is, and this is the last plea on this, if there is any interest in this, serious interest in it, you must be willing to give me your email address, and I can understand if you don't want to do that, because I don't post mine. A lot of people do. I won't do that. So if I can... Get somebody that willing to pick this up, and I'm not going to insist on you keeping the tradition of Uncle Dorkle. I just would like it to it be in, be used. You can name it what you want. Uh, I'm deci decided. Let's not get picky here. The tradition of Uncle Dorkle is over. So if I don't get anything by the warm weather, I am going to strip them. I will hang on to the head, and when I get some extra money, I may ship it to somebody. I will make a video on that when that time comes, and if anybody's interested, they can chime in at that time. But we're not going to worry about that now, so we're going to put all this with this deodorant back in here. I just wanted to show you what is involved.
in building this. If I had it to do over again, would I do it? No. Absolutely not. You live and learn. Okay, I did have to, I did want, yeah, I can't even talk today. I did want to make, my hands are cold, that's why. I did want to make this video. Uh, the radio was out, going out to Buzz, so everything worked out really, really well. So uh, Buzz says he's going to make a video on it. you got to give him some time to do that. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I know that that Crosley radio is going to a good home. I was very, very concerned of the cost of shipping that out. And Buzz managed to get a discount, a substantial discount, which I'm not even going to mention, from UPS. And all I had to do was drop it off. Okay, we're going to get this guy back in the shed. So, if anybody has any interest in this, you have to pick it up. There's no way in hell I'm shipping this. It would probably cost $1,000 at least to send it. That's it. Thanks for watching.